Welcome back to the Bellophone channel. Now many people have asked me how I make these nifty little rubber balls that you've seen if you've watched some of my videos. I use them in a lot of different instruments. And so in today's video, I'm going to show you I'm going to show you the way that I do it. So let's get going. Now here's a starting a brand new ball. Uh, first a little dusting of cornstarch for a mold release when the time comes so I can get the form off easier. And now I, I do work under a fume hood because this latex is very strong. It's mixed with ammonia. And it's pretty straightforward. It's just a whole bunch of coats, one after the other, waiting about three, four hours between coats. And there it is. It's something o'clock, apparently. I don't know if you can really see what I'm doing, but it's not that interesting. So this goes on kind of like paint, and it dries into pure gum latex rubber. Pretty cool stuff. There you go. And right around the neck. And there is coat number one on brand new ball. One more thing I have to show you is how the Snoutmaster 5000 works. And that'll be next. Yes, folks, it is the Snoutmaster 5000. Now, uh, this is the ball that I was just coating. It's got its first coat. And you've got to fish this up through the little bearings under there. I'll show you them. There's a ball bearing here. And this can now uh, spin freely. And one takes a syringe full of snouting compound and after every coat it's just a matter of applying a little bead of latex on here There. Can't put too much at a time because it'll sag down. But there you go. That's a good start. Here's a view of the underside of the Snoutmaster showing the little guide bearings here. And give it a little spin like this. And away she goes. The form has 10 or 11 coats on it at this point. And now comes the critical part of cutting the rubber and getting the cap off so I can get the form out. And uh, after we get it back together again, it will get another 8 or 10 coats. The first step is to get the mandrel out of the neck. And I have this little wedge-shaped uh, the end is, won't focus there, the end is carved into a very smooth wedge and I get it wet and uh, just basically uh, work this thing in here 
take a brush of water, get it all gooped up in there. the mandrel. Next step is to take this another uh, larger wedge all sanded very smooth and I'll get this wet as well and what I've got to start doing is separating the rubber from the form inside being very careful not to stretch or pinch anything. And off she starts to come. Now, next thing is to scribe a line and cut that top off. I'm going to make a little reference so that when I put it back together I can get it, I can match the cut edges. And now comes the horrible part. Cutting this ball to bits. the reference mark. So there's the top part with the snout and to separate the form from the raw rubber I've got to be very careful not to stretch or deform this cut part otherwise it won't go back together straight and I'll really have a mess on my hands. So this is just a matter of doing this and spraying a little water in there to keep things nice and goopy. Okay, I've got I've got the rubber separated from the form in there all the way around and it's wet so pop and that's the really hard part all done well I shouldn't say the really hard part because fitting this together is probably the most hard and I'll show you how I do that first I make sure that it all fits evenly dry before I put any latex on it and make sure there's no problems here and now I will apply some latex around the cut edges on both pieces and I've really got to work fast here I wish I didn't have to worry about that camera <laughs> you know okay 
Okay, here's this part now. a mess of it. I do this better when the camera's not going. <laughs> he says nervously. Okay. Now I line up the reference marks. lucky that time. Oh, not so lucky. There. Oh, oh. This part is really nervous making because if you have any slight misalignment, it's tending to stick together at this point, and you really don't want to have to pull it apart or try to adjust it. You can tap things a little bit and get them to sync up. But if you've got any bad misalignments, you sometimes have to take it apart and start over applying the bead. Okay, that looks pretty good. Tap this, and the last thing is I'm just going to smooth out this bead a little bit and set this aside. This little tool that I was uh, smoothing off the seam with, this is a number two snouter. It's made with a piece of uh, hardened shim stock uh, that's I think three mils three thousandths of an inch and uh, it's a nice little tool snouter number two available from Solomon Industries exclusively and this form that I just pulled out of there uh, it's all set to get its mandrel stuck back in There we go, and ready to get its first coat and start a new ball. That's how we do it. Well, here's uh, all four that I got done today, and by comparison, here's a finished one with the rest of its coats on. So that's a done one. So once the seam has cured, it's pretty much invisible and uh, pretty much as strong as the rest of the rubber. And what I'll do now is uh, I'll just put a coat along the top of the ball just to strengthen it a little bit. And then I'll put the mandrel back in and do the rest of the coats. Right, now the mandrels have been stuck back into the balls. This is the next day. And it's just a matter of putting on about another six to eight coats until the ball is as thick and springy as I want it for the particular instrument. And uh, as I go along, these marks that, that I made uh, where is it there? There we go. The little mark. These things pretty much disappear and uh, they won't even be visible when the ball is done. And that seam that I cut and glued, 
that's pretty much integral with the rest of the rubber so it's not going to be a problem and uh, yeah now there's four done ones ready for the boiler the boiler nah not the boiler the boiler <laughs> now once the balls are cool it's just a matter of applying a silicone preservative in this case armor all uh, which you can get in the auto parts uh, store and you just goop it on and wipe it off and this will preserve the rubber these balls will last eight or ten years with a periodic application of the silicone and there you go that's how we do it and one more thing I want to show you before I sign off here this is a bottle organ that I'm making and down in here these are the snout clamps that I showed making in my previous video And this is a view of the underside of the ball board showing how these balls will be mounted. The snouts go down in here and the clamp clamps the bead on. So each one of these balls is going to be hooked up to a bottle. And you'll see more of that in an upcoming video. So that's how I make these balls and what I'm going to be using them for. And if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. See you next time.